Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how you can spiralize light, an actual spinning vortex made out of light. Now before we start this experiment, first let's set the groundwork for what we're going to be talking about. First you need to understand that light can have momentum. Light can have linear momentum, but it can also have angular momentum. So what that means is it can actually carry physical momentum so that when it hits something it can push it and it can push it in a line or it can cause it to spin like that. It can have angular momentum just like a top spinning has angular momentum. So what I'm going to show you today is a method in which you can actually spin light. And in order to do this all you need is a laser pen and a very specific pattern. Let me tell you what this pattern is and what it does. So what this pattern is going to do when the light hits it is actually change the light so that it starts spinning in a circle. So it's going to create a vortex of light. Now you'll notice that this pattern here, it looks like normally spaced lines, but you'll notice that there's kind of a dislocation in the middle. Now this dislocation is the special part here. Now in order for this to work, we can't have the pattern be this big. We actually have to shrink it down. And the best way to shrink this down is to put it in a copy machine and then reduce the size of it. If you just try to print it out from a Word document or something, you'll be limited to the pixels of the Word document when you try to make it small enough. You need to make it so that each side of this square is around 0.2 centimeters long. So in order to do that, if you make this around two inches long and then put this on a photocopier and then reduce the image on the copier, to around 10% of the original size, then you'll get an image that looks like this. So this is a tiny image of this. And also we can't have this be on normal paper because we actually have to pass light through it. So you have to print it on transparency paper. So I just bought a stack of transparency film. This is what's used on overhead projectors. I don't know if anybody in this current generation still uses overhead projectors, but you can buy transparency film still. And that's what I've done here. So you can see if you take a really close look at this, you can see the fork right in the middle of it there. So all I'm doing now is I'm just going to shine my laser light onto this film here. Now if you're gonna try to do this at home, a lot of cheaper laser points, they're actually not a circle. And so to make it more of a circle, what you can do is you can actually just put a little piece of tape over it and it'll make it more of a dot rather than a line. So now watch what happens when I don't put it on the fork, but just put it on some of the straight lines on the pattern. So basically what I get on the back wall here is some, is some concentric dots like that. And that's happening because the light diffracts. So those lines are causing some of the light to be absorbed and the light that passes through, it's causing the peaks and valleys of those waves to combine together and constructively and destructively interfere together. So instead of having just one laser dot, what you'll have is multiple laser dots that have constructively interfered together. Basically what we made is kind of a double slit experiment, but instead of having one slit, we have multiple slits here. Okay, so normal linearized light has a wave front that looks like this. It has peaks and valleys of the electromagnetic waves that go up and down. And as it moves through space, it moves like this. So basically your waves are moving through space. So basically you're gonna see light in this whole direction here. And if you have different rotations of this linearized light, you could see a whole circle of it, spin this around in a circle basically, and you're going to get a circle of light. But now let's say instead of a planar wave front like this, we have something that looks similar to it, kind of from the side, but if you look at it straight on, notice that it's actually in a spiral. So if you look down the center of this, you can actually see down the center of it. So you don't actually see light down the center, but you can actually see right through it. There's nothing in the center. The light is only in concentric circles on the outside. So for this spiralized light as it's moving through space, it's rotating like this as it moves. So the spiralized light moves through space like this, spinning as it goes. So now if both of these were to hit a back screen, what would you actually see? So what that would mean if we had spiralized light, on the center it would be dark and on the outsides it would be light, just like a vortex of water. In the center it goes down, there's kind of a singularity at the center, and on the outskirts of it it's larger. Okay, now watch what happens when I move the laser dot onto the fork. 
Okay, so notice how there are three dots here. So now you can see that the center dot has no dark spot in the middle, but these side dots have a dark spot in the middle. So the two dots of light with the dark spot in the middle are actually two vortices of light. So those each are an individual vortex on either side of the bright spot in the middle. When the light hits that dislocation in the diffraction grating, it actually causes it to spin in a vortex. So different methods of spiralizing light are being used for quantum computing and even in astronomical measurements where you can block out a specific portion of light that you want to block out using spiralized light. So it's very neat that you could do an experiment like this with a simple laser pointer and a transparency film to actually spiralize light in your house. Some would assume that you would need really expensive lab equipment and high-tech measurement equipment in order to see this. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.